we're closing in here on Mount St. Helens. As you can see there, it lost its top. It used to be way back before 1980. It was 4,000 feet taller. Oh, day I break these chains. I'm bound for the life of the simple things. I missed out on getting to do my uh, summit hike of Mount St. Helens up here because they shut down the permitting for that hike. I was totally bummed about that. Apparently, uh, it's a COVID thing. They're not issuing any more permits for that hike. Tomorrow, there's a hard hike that I'm considering to do that looked really neat. It's an 11.6 mile hike. Tomorrow's my last day off before I start the new job, so, woo. Look at that. Sorry for interrupting what I was saying, but that was a view and a half. That was such a view I just had to uh, kind of interject into the conversation here and show it to you. But, so, not tomorrow, but the next day, I will be beginning the whole watch job again for the new company. And I'll be working, I think it's supposed to be 11 straight 12s. We have arrived on location. So we're here at the trailhead. This is Hummocks Trail. And it's a short one. It's only about two and a half miles. And it'll be a nice little uh, short hike to go along with the Beaver Falls one that we did today. I really wish I could do the peak hike on this. Oh, it looks like the this is a uh, birding trail for the Audubon Society here in Washington. That's pretty cool. So like I was saying, this is Hummock's Trail. It's number 229. It's a two and a half mile loop. And uh, there's, I guess there's a half mile boundary trail. The beginning of this trail is kind of plain. A little late for all the uh, wildflowers. All oh, the yellow guys are still out. These information boards are always fun. So Mount St. Helens is a dynamite keg. <laughs> uh, the funny thing about this, uh, Mount St. Helens here, is the ash fallout hit the little farm town that I grew up in called Moses Lake. And I heard a lot of stories about it being that I guess I thought it was snow when I was a little kid and I wanted to go out there and play. All right, guys, we got another information board. So mountain blocks fill the valley here. Mount St. Helens collapsed into at least three separate blocks from eyewitness accounts and the scattered deposits geologists reconstructed the dynamics of the avalanche. So that's kind of cool. Painstakingly, Harry Glycken earned his doctorate degree as he mapped and measured these deposits. He spent five years shoveling and sifting and walking across nearly every square inch studying these hammocks. Harry's work led to the discovery of dozens of other ancient avalanche deposits worldwide and the recognition of a new volcanic hazard. It's pretty cool. I did a double major in biochemistry and applied economics while I was in Ithaca going to college and stuff. And when I got out, I ended up working for Algae Tech for a bit they stopped getting funding and then I went over to a company called Core Lab. And working there and going out on all these core chases and stuff where we were getting the samples from the reservoirs, uh, you know, the oil and gas reservoirs and everything, you know, that really made me wish I had actually gone into geology. I didn't really realize how cool that field was until I was out where it was being applied and everything. So stuff like that's always interesting to me. Here's another one of these uh, boards talking about the hummocks here and sculpting them. So after the Mount St. Helens kind of came to rest May 18th, the melting chunks of glaciers, water in the deposits, and water in the buried Toodle River seeped to the surface, creating mud flows. Pieces of the hammock slumped apart, leaving sharp ridges, steep faces, and depressions that filled with water to form unstable ponds. So all of this kind of stuff in this real rough terrain that we're about to walk through, every time that there's a rainstorm, it's getting reformed. I don't know, that's kind of cool to think about. I know that like landscapes are always under formation, but something like this is so much more so because 
of all the recent activity with the volcanic activity and everything. I haven't seen this area in probably 20 years almost. Something like 20 years, probably a good 20, 20 years, 20, 23 years, 22 or 23 years since I've seen this area. And it already looks a lot different. There's one of the ponds it was kind of talking about. See how it's just a little isolated pond. Over. We got the river over here. I think that's the Toodle River down there. Cool thing about the Toodle River is that's the one when I was right after my senior year in high school, floated miles and miles down the Toodle River. Sometimes, you know, six to eight hour float down probably 15, 18 miles of the Toodle River. It was so much fun when I was a kid. Looks like we got another one of these ponds. Great big old guy. Definitely stagnating enough water for duckweed and mossy type stuff to grow up on. Water looks really calm too over there. Okay, so we came across another information board here talking about how water is the lifeblood and what's basically going to re introduce nature i guess <laughs> maybe a reclamation project of its very own here that we're not even helping with and when it's talking about the hummocks it's talking about all these like little landslide spots that came because of the volcano exploding when saint helens erupted it ripped up this terrain and left a lot of avalanche material and as you can see over there the green space is starting to slowly take it back and trees are starting to grow in again and look at this all along this trail we got all this volcanic rock <laughs> because we have the volcano right there and a lot of lava flows came through there a lot of stuff got blown around as you see here and there's our Mount St. Helens. And then it's talking about how the colors of the earth reflect the eruptions in the past. Another cool information board. And a nice view here of St. Helens. And look at all the little, basic, uh, basically uh, <laughs> all the little different avalanche piles that you see over there that haven't been covered up yet. We're going to go ahead and uh, take the boundary trail here, as you see, before I finish off the loop. Went out the boundary trail for almost a mile. Got another view of like St. Helens here. And then all these avalanche spots, the different debris spots, and even got a creek cutting through it here. Really interesting geological stuff. Okay guys, we're gonna head back to the boundary trail over to the Hummocks Loop Trail. This is the ones I came to see, but I'm gonna take you back, show you a little time lapse of it. You take my hand and we'll go away to a different place. We'll float on air and we'll hide away your escape Look up and feel the shifting winds Tossing us around again Hold tight, get ready to begin And just levitate much the rest of the way back to the hummocks loop trail looks exactly like what it does right now so i figured that was enough of showing you the the interesting stuff it was all back there back over here to the spot where the boundary trail started and the hummocks trail is back over here here's the loop that's what I want to be on is loop. See what else we have talking about the debris and a new hazard. Huh. So 
So the careful investigation of the Mount St. Hell's debris avalanche led scientists to discover of hundreds of similar deposits at the bases of volcanoes around the world. They found that the massive debris avalanches are far more common than previously believed and are a newly recognized hazard. Cities at the base of the volcanoes have been built unknowingly of this danger from debris avalanches. Geologists aware of this hazard can help communities evacuate, relocate, or rebuild in the shadow of an active volcano. Dang, that's a trip. Mount Shasta, who knew? I didn't know it was active. Huh, that's kind of a trip, huh? A lot more active volcanoes than maybe we even knew about. Let's go enjoy this the rest of this little trail. We got another one of those little ponds that that information board talked about earlier. Right along the trail here. That water looks pretty stagnant. Got another bit of one here, a bunch of duckweed in there. Here's a cool spot. Kind of a neat view of the Mount St. Helens over there. And then the uh, river, uh, it might be a creek still technically here. I'm not sure which one it is. I'm tempted to call that the Toodle. Uh, Toodle River, or the Toodle Creek or the running through here, but it's kind of cool to see it right next to St. Helens and look at it cutting through all those hummocks, all that debris that was left from the mountain. Here's another geological joy right through the hummocks here. Really pretty view too, really interesting. It's just kind of cool doing this kind of a trail through like a geological perspective. Each of these little spots, the kind of formations and avalanche piles. You know, you without like the information boards, you might not see it that way, especially if you're like me and you don't have a full in-depth understanding of geology. I know a lot about individual rocks from that job I had in oil and gas. And I could tell you a lot about the pressures and stuff that they can handle and how to drill them and, you know, how much oil you can get out of them. But there's so much about the formations and stuff that I have no clue about. And it's just kind of cool. Oh, guys, this is so peaceful through here. I guess you would call this a thicket. It's not that thick, but uh, we got a lot of what looks like ash trees in here. And uh, I hear a little trickling stream just off to the left of me. It's really, really faint. It's really slow. Seems like it's pretty small. It's over here where all the ferns are. Yeah, here, you can hear it. Makes me wonder if this little section was kind of left. Maybe there is still some vegetation here after the uh, big eruption. And that's why it's grown up so much. A little creek in here and it's kind of on a low spot. So it gets a lot of water that comes in here and probably draws any other kind of vegetation seeds or anything that are up on the hills or the avalanche piles, as we should call them. <laughs> We're a good uh, four miles in now after I took that uh, boundary tra trail for a little while. Curious to see what's gonna be up here after the thicket, you know? This has been kind of a cool trail. There's so many different terrains. We got heavy grassy areas, marshy areas. We got all these ash trees. The cool thing is, is this is probably one organism, you know, because that's what ashes do. They, they're kind of like, uh, kind of like grasses with rhizomes, you know, they throw offshoots everywhere of what you think is a brand new tree, but it's all one organism. All right, guys, we're all wrapped up. We're back to the van. There's a pretty mountain view over there. Time to roll back into town, get a shower at the truck stop. It's getting expensive. And now that Jay Inslee, the governor over here in Washington, shut down the, all the gyms from showers, 
There's a few gyms that had showers open and they cleaned them every hour and now Jay shut those down and uh, one of them was my Planet Fitness. So now I gotta pay for truck stop showers again. Get out there, connect with people, live your big story and make sure you do something every single day to reduce world suck. Peace guys.